Okay, I I'm Kate Purdy. I'm the creator showrunner of Undone, the new series for Amazon. And I created the show with Raphael Bob Waxberg. He's the creator of uh, Bojack Horseman. And we work together on the first season of Bojack. I've worked on Bojack most of the seasons. And uh, the first season I wrote this episode called Downer Ending. And it's the episode where Bojack goes on a drug trip. And he has this alternate life experience where he realizes if he had made some different choices that were perhaps a bit less selfish, he could have had this beautiful, simple life in Maine with the woman he loved and with a beautiful daughter and very close to nature. And after that experience, Raphael approached me, and I was very honored by this, and he said, like, what if we developed a TV series that explored those themes or ideas? And so we started talking about our own experiences, and I talked a little about my own fears around my mental health and mental well-being, because my grandmother was schizophrenic, both my parents have experienced depression and anxiety. And then I had some depression in college, but then in my mid-30s I had a kind of a nervous breakdown, had depression, had anxiety, really wondered about my mind becoming unraveled, didn't know how I would get out of this, or if I could, uh, and then ultimately found my way out of it by finding alternative medicine, indigenous cultures, um, different ways of thinking about the, our minds and what these messages or these feelings could be, and um, through like meditation and talking to indigenous shamans um, realize that maybe this is actually a gift. Like maybe this is an ancestor reaching through and saying you're on the wrong path. You have something else that you need to be doing. Um, and you need to let this go. And you need to let go of your bubble of delusion of who you think you are or who you need to be to be respected. Maybe that's not who you are at all. And so we started talking about the nature of reality and how we perceive it and what if you had a character who is going through this sort of awakening experience and that you don't really know like am I losing my mind or is this real? What can I trust? Do I, how can I trust myself? Um, and that was the genesis for the show. So I think that, you know, especially talking about like mental health and like that, and when it comes to women especially, I think there are very few shows that have addressed that in any shape or form in, in recent memory. I think of like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend talks about that in a more comedic way, but they have some serious episodes. And, um, you know, and I think when it comes to animation, dealing with yeah, female characters, the only shows, yeah. things that I can really think of that I think they have really, really strong female characters that I think people relate to that have that fantasy element that's really still rooted in humanity and reality at the same time. Uh, are you kind of meshing those two together? Because it sounds like almost those are the two things that are melting together as one. Can you talk about kind of the fantasy of the rotoscoping and the animation coming together and this, using that as a medium to tell this story of, of mental health and moving forward with power and things like that? Yeah, definitely. So we decided to use Rotoscopy with our director, Hisko Hulsing, who's from the Netherlands. Um, he had done it with other projects and said, like, that this is really the way to approach this because you can really capture the performance of the actors. You can capture all those micro expressions, all those small emotions, because there's so much kind of rich interplay with the spectrum of emotions that we're talking about and writing about. Um, and I thought that was a brilliant idea because you can really see it in the because the performances come through and you can see it in the medium. And he totally understood and got what we were doing, which was to do sort of a very grounded, realistic, naturalistic show, but that stretches reality. So animation is the perfect format for that because there's a fluidity with it. Um, and sort of what we expect from animation, what can be done is stretchier. The reality is already stretchier. So we're more accepting of that already. So when we're talking about kind of a real life experience that is stretchy, it just felt like the perfect fit. Do you feel that I'm I'm very very excited about this show, and not, but I also watch a lot of uh, animation. I'm, I'm very versed in, in anime and things like that, and like Perfect Blue, which are these these animes that are for adults that have been turned into movies that that are, have been live action that people are more familiar with. That 
the storylines. Do you feel that people, uh, adults are becoming more accepting of watching adult animation that's not just like humor based, like The Simpsons, and because of uh, inroads with like Bojack Horseman and things like that? Yeah, I, I definitely think that's true. And I think Raphael with this show, one of the things that was important to him in the process of creating this is that he really wanted to push the boundaries of animation and how we think about it. I mean, I feel like with Bojack, he sort of said, this is like those other animated shows that you know, but I'm going to surprise you and say that actually we're going to drop our foot over here into this more realistic, grounded, emotional world occasionally. And he feels like this is sort of the next step into this kind of very realistic exploration of emotions, feelings, drama, family dynamics. Um, so I think that was part of his vision. But I think you're exactly right when you talk about sort of these Japanese filmmakers and, and anime and um, some of the, the more elevated, more sophisticated storytelling that happens in animation. And I think having a global, more global experience, more global audience, people are more accepting in terms of their mentality and what they accept from the animated world. Um, I also feel like we've all kind of grown up with animation. And, and now animation is growing up with us, uh, and that's exciting. It's fun. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so, what what do you hope that what do you get out of this? What kind of message are you trying to send? If you're sending a message at all? Yeah. I mean, I think what people, what I hope people get out of it is, I would love for them to think at the end of this series about what is the nature of reality, how do they experience it, what do they feel our purpose here may be, and what do they want the answer to be. And then what did you learn about yourself doing this? I feel like every day I'm growing, which is great. I think when I feel that I am continually evolving and growing by being challenged and being pushed and pulled by the challenges of, of production, of leading a, a room of writers, of writing scripts and getting rounds and rounds of notes and having to sort of really contemplate, well, how do I improve this? How do I deepen this? How do I make this clearer? Um, it is oftentimes overwhelming, but ultimately that allows me to grow and grow into myself and, um, and stretch myself. And how do you explain oh, no, like the success real. of Bojack? How do I explain the success of Bojack? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think people really love Bojack because it is everything in one. It is funny, it's strange, it's quirky, it has weird animal jokes, but it's also this very deep drama that's self-reflective and about an existential crisis. And, um, it's about the fame cage of thinking that these things will bring me happiness because society says that these are the valuable things, but somehow I'm deeply in a well of my own suffering and I don't understand how to get out of it. And I think um, the fact that it has that broad spectrum of experience uh, speaks to people. It's going to be the last question, please. Thank you. I know at ATX they screened two episodes. Can you talk a little bit about the um, fan reaction or the reaction of the people in the room? Did you, was it? Yeah, it's been, so here at, AT, at Comic-Con here in San Diego and then also at ATX in Austin, uh, we got to see two episodes, the first two episodes with, with an audience. And it's been fantastic because we've been living with it. I mean, we started talking about it four years ago and then we've been in production for the last year and a half. And we've been living with it for so long that to have uh, the experience of sharing it with an audience is so rewarding because you, you hear the little gasps or the laughs or the strange noises and you realize that people are responding and it feels great to be able to share it. Awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, thank you.